What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and let me start off for apologizing for this video because things are about to get real angry, but first, I want to do something a little bit silly. Let's welcome an all new character named Early Access Guy. Howdy folks, I'm Early Access Guy, just a fella trying to make his own little world. As you can tell by what's going on behind me, I've already got a good start. There's physics, graphics, some cool trees and stuff, but the problem is, I ain't got no money. How am I gonna finish this giant, vibrant universe without your help? Well, here's where you come in. As you can see, I've only got this little teeny tiny wallet with 10 Bengali dollars inside. So, I mean, this can't do nothing. I can't even put a couple bushes and a machine gun inside a house. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna put this on early access and try and soak up millions and millions of dollars of your hard-earned money because, hey, I'm going to try and improve this, but once I get bored, I'll probably just drop it. Because that's the beauty of early access. As long as I care, I can keep making that money. But as soon as I get bored, I can just drop the whole dang thing. However, if you get in on the ground floor, perhaps you'll get to see this game really try and flourish. Become something that's worth talking about. But who am I kidding? That's probably not going to happen. Most early access games never bother even travel or leave early access. I might make more money just by canceling it and making a sequel because there ain't no justice. So I guess it's just time to get back to work. So thank you for supporting this. Go ahead and support me on Patreon and all that. But uh, I guess I'm going to go hit myself in the head with this hammer for 45 minutes because who cares? It's early access and anything's allowed. <laughs> Let's take a step back in time to 2016, an era that wasn't too long ago, but was very different in the gaming landscape. People were still trying to invent new genres and new ways to play, as all good indie developers should. And somebody came up upon the idea of Battle Royale, creating something where one person has one life and the last man standing is the true victor. Well, one of the people at the forefront of this, or by some people's argument, the person who started it all, was The Culling. They came out with a project that was very much this, in spirit, heart, and soul. And the thing was, it actually took off. The Culling is considered by a lot the inventor of Battle Royale, and so because of it, it ended up getting some strong adopters early adopter, some would say, because this is a big, popular early access game. When it came out, people really were jumping on board, trying to support it, give feedback, help it expand and grow, because that's what they always advertise as the point of early access, right? Hey, you're now in this game, you can actually help influence how it turns out. Well, fast forward a bit, and people were quitting in record droves, because it's not like this game existed on an island. There's always competition showing up. We had player unknown battlegrounds. We had stuff like Fortnite that's now appearing in 2018. All of this stuff though was made to try and take away some of that attention. People who wanted to make their own version of their game. Now, this is where things get a little bit bad. People are obviously quitting it. People weren't going to stick with the calling forever, and the developers started to feel like they may have screwed up. While their game was trying to constantly iterate and come up with new ideas, they were still losing players, and even when they came out with giant patches to introduce all sorts of new weapons and change up the map, people weren't really coming back. So the developer himself even did an interview today talking about what they should do, saying, okay, we were facing an impasse. What do we do when players have already paid for the game and now quit? Well, even if we update it and try and reinvent the entire thing, those people aren't going to pay again. They've already bought it. The only way we're going to get new players on board is to rush a sequel. So that's what they did. As of today, there is now a Culling 2. Now, I bet you're probably thinking, okay, that's probably a little bit bad because the people who helped build it are now going to have to buy it again, but at least they'll get free access, right? The people who supported Culling 1 for that year and a half, they're probably getting a copy of it, right? No. The Culling 2 is being released today for $20, and even if you played the original game from launch and provided detailed feedback and everything you could, that doesn't matter. 
Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily an evil thing, but I feel like it's beginning to highlight an increasing problem in early access. They don't owe you anything. While you are essentially paying to be part of a beta test, at the end of the day, you don't have any real estate. This isn't your project, this isn't your passion, this isn't you, it's them. And at the end of the day, they're trying to make a profit. So I feel like this whole situation with Coling is really frustrating because I keep seeing this thing over and over again, which is where somebody comes up with a plan, a general outline for what they want something to be, and they start crafting it. And the second it is playable, the second they have some sort of cobbled together version of it, they start slapping it on early access, trying to get you to pay for it, trying to get anybody they can to jump on and basically flesh it out, to pay their bills while they come up with more stuff. And as soon as they start realizing, hmm, this isn't working out, they drop it. Now the reason that's so frustrating to me is because real games can't do that. One of my favorite games of all time is Resident Evil. That series is so legendary to me that I feel like I'm very invested in it. I've even watched all the really bad movies and the good animated movies. I'm wearing a Resident Evil shirt. This cannot be abandoned. When you get one of these, it's complete. It lands on store shelves ready to be played. You can finish it start to end. Every single piece of it is balanced, fleshed out, and ready to scare the absolute hell out of you. Early access games don't work like this. Even if you are getting one that's supposed to be focused on horror, typically the scares don't work, areas are completely empty, or sometimes they don't even have a story written. I mean, there have definitely been games I've installed that were sent to me by developers who wanted my attention, who were like, hey, check out this great project. And then as soon as I start walking around, I realize it's nothing. They have not even programmed a single monster in it. Early access is now becoming more and more just a get-rich-quick scheme. Are you a developer who has a little bit of talent and a lot of knowledge about marketing? Can you sell a product that is not at all complete? Well, you could easily make millions of dollars. The Culling guys probably made a ton off their project. They were the first Battle Royale. They were literally the inventors of this genre by some people's account. So they probably raked in a big amount of cash. Is it true that they've now been replaced by bigger and better games? Yes, but the person who strikes first a lot of times makes the most money. So the fact that they've now taken all that cash, gone in and basically gotten the completed game of Culling 1, reconfigured it a tiny bit and put it back on store shelves and called it Culling 2 just to double dip on their audience shows that this is a business that more and more is built around the concept of invest, invest, rake in the cash, rake in the cash. I guess I feel like more and more we need to see some sort of giant crackdown, not from the government itself, but I do think that internally the games industry needs to start trying to enforce some sort of policy. Like, let's face it, the ESRB screws up a lot. While they do manage to rate things properly in many cases, there's also a lot of oversight. I feel like they need to start actually trying to grade this stuff or make it where Steam actually has to pay attention to things going in the early access store page. You shouldn't be able to just make a game that says, uh, hey, we're trying to rip off Pokemon, so you're going to be going around capturing monsters and having a blast. That sounds great, right? But what happens if you pay $25 to get into this project and it's literally grass and a thing that looks like Pikachu that's name is Leekapoo? Now, that's it. You're screwed. You can't get a refund, you can't do anything, and there's nobody to even complain to because this is such an unregulated market. Excuse me while I get extremely mad here for a second. I'm starting to get pissed off about all this. I am so past my limit because here's the thing. I play a lot of games. That's my greatest freaking love in the universe is sitting down and enjoying big stories fighting online to try and be the best in the best in anything I go into. I want to play, I want to win, I want to love the things that I have the controller in my hand to play. But these things are feeling like roadblocks. Things that are literally invented to try and be 
just a cash cow. So many of these early access games are clearly designed with the end in mind. Let's get that profit. Let's try and go forward. Let's see how big we can grow this company. Instead of the beginning, which is, hey, I have an idea that nobody's done before. Let's make something that actually challenges gamers to think of things differently. What happened to this? This is what the indie market is doing now. This is early access, and here's AAA. People are still building big, beautiful experiences here in the middle that are made to blow your mind. We still live in a world that has uncharted, but at the same time, I feel like there's definitely indie people who are trying to make their own version of that and then get lazy and just slip into the early access trap. I am so blown away the fact that this just keeps getting worse and worse. We are going to hit a critical meltdown point where suddenly every single game is just going to probably try and take some form of early access because it works. Let's face it, these people are basically printing money because there is a new person out there. There's a new set of gamers that actually love this crap. <sighs> I cannot stand this. I'm going to go play some games that are actually finished. Because let's face it, those are the ones that are still the best in my opinion. Fortnite is probably never going to get done. It's actually probably going to make more profit because it is early access and that's still so alluring in this day and age. But what do you think about this? Have you ever actually pitched in on an early access game that didn't even come close to be completed? Let me know in the comments down below so I can make sure to avoid that like the dumpster fire it is. Thanks so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. I don't know why I did the double hand this time. Uh, if you liked this introduction with that silly character and green screen, let me know. Obviously, I have a huge green screen now, and if you guys are interested, I might start doing stuff like that more often. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If this video gets like 2,000 likes, I'll know that you guys care about that kind of stuff. Oh, hey. I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise, it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.